Hi and welcome to Drama and Theatre Grade 8, the third episode, ep episode about characterization. And now, what is characterization? Maybe it's a bit different between reality, what is going on in the real world and the theatre, but in a way it's similar. Let me explain. When you watch someone doing something, using their voices, and you manage to describe it, you have already started to characterize. In theater, there is a third step. Not only do you have to observe and describe, you also have to pick it up and use it in your own body and your own voice. So one good advice when you are working with theater is to observe other people and other behaviors because it shows something. Uh, for instance, if you take a glass of water or whatever, it can be a soft drink, people don't drink it the same way. You will notice that some people, they will drink like this. And that is something that characterizes them. Some other people will drink it like this. Maybe they are shaking like this. And it sends signals to the one who is observing. So in a way you can see that even in reality, you can say that it's like a stage. There is a message sending out from the person when you and me are acting in reality. So I will also show you two different methods to create very, very fast characters. As you know, we are working a little bit now with stereotypes. And uh, if I want to give you an example, I will give you an example and then you can think about it. Is there something that characterizes a bus driver? How the body is moving, how the body posture is, and how the voice is. Maybe during daytime, he or sometimes she will not talk that much. You don't hear the voice. And maybe that will show also when he is not or she is not working. The same you can ask about the vegetable seller. Maybe there is something in common between all vegetable sellers. And then you can compare the two, the bus driver and the vegetable seller, and you can see there is a difference. This is the way you start to understand what is a character. The first example I will show you is called uh, the instant character. And for that reason, you need to have a share. Uh, normally, yourself, you, you have your own way of sitting, but now I will ask you to try to sit in a way you usually don't do. So, for me, for instance, I will not sit like this. And then if you ask yourself now when you are sitting, what is the name of this character? You can say, okay, my name is Roy. You can ask yourself, what is the age of this character sitting like that? Uh, my age is about 23. I'm very soon going to 24. Then you can continue to ask the character, uh, how is your family situation? I'm living alone. I'm, I'm definitely living alone. I'm, I'm searching for something interesting in life, so I have to... And uh, then maybe you can ask yourself what kind of hobby, what kind of profession, and so on, does this character have. And then you can see that even the voice, when I start to improvise and answer the questions from this body, will start to change. And with the body and the voice, you will have many things that will be given to you automatically. You don't have to like you are improvising, but you don't have to write things down. You just invent as you go. So this is the basic question you ask the character. Of course, I can, I can sit like this also, and then maybe my name is Mary, and then I can continue like that. So try yourself, you observe reality, and then maybe you try new ways of sitting that you usually don't sit in, and then you ask yourself, and there you have a character. You don't have to sit, of course, even this, this character can, can stand up and then you continue and then you act and so on. 
So there you have like a very fast way to create very complex characters, actually, by just investigating how they sit. A very common and other way to, to create character is to use the idea of animals. I must remind you now that it's not about imitating animals, it's more or less like putting the animal inside of you. So you, if I say a chicken, for instance, maybe something will happen that can be created by a human that has like a chicken inside of him or her. It's not like jumping around and pretending to be a chicken, it's just to find a way to move around. And maybe even the voice will be affected by, probably, uh, by the way uh, the animal is behaving. So, of course, you can have an idea of a bear, how the bear is, and maybe the voice will change, and this is now a character. But if you try to imitate the bear, you will look uh, a bit, maybe, strange. But it's better, you think, turn the human side of the bear up, or whatever animal you want to investigate. So that is two fast ways to create characters with certain kind of behaviors. And of course, if you continue, you can think about monkeys and rabbits and maybe giraffe and so on. So that's what I wanted to show you about characterization today. So thank you for watching. Next episode will be about storytelling.